great. The first thing, if you're going to make a mod of a dummy or an animal or whatever, uh, you start with a model. Uh, I'm going to give it a texture name of deer. And I'll just rename the mesh to deer also. Now keep in mind, deer is also going to be this mesh here is also going to be the flex body for the J-beam, which we'll get into that. Uh, what we're going to do first is just get the deer in a hole, like its entirety, to export as a mod. Then we'll work on making it so that it's more destructible. So if you look here, you'll see an orange dot. That orange dot means that's the thing's center of origin, which if we're making a mod, we want it to be zero 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 where the three where the three D cursor is currently at. Uh, which this can be moved holding shift and right clicking, you know, but if you're making a mod, <clears throat> you're gonna want it to be at zero. Zero, zero. And then you're going to tell this to set origin to 3D cursor. If you've scaled it or anything, I, but regardless, if you just whatever you do when you assign it to the 3D cursor, then go back and say apply all transforms. All right, so now we're going to make a basic box, a mesh cube. I'm just going to scale it up. And this is a, just very crude, like a big Christmas box or something. But we want it to contain the mesh, but I'm not going to worry about getting it perfect. What we need to do now is set this thing's origin to the 3D cursor. And apply all transforms. Now we gotta go to edit mode and select the box. Well, first of all, let's save our file. Because we don't want to have to do that again. We're going to export this cube as a collider. I'll call it Deer Cube. But I want to name the vertices that it's going to export as. Um, I want them to have a prefix because there's going to be multiple vertices, well, nodes exported. And they all need to have unique prefixes. So we'll just call this body. We will export JBeam Deer Cube, which that's just putting the name that's here. That's all that is. Export JBeam Deer Cube. And it should say successfully exported one JBeam. It will not let you export if. Which I'm surprised it let me export that because it's not triangulated. I'll just save myself a headache and go ahead and triangulate it. I know it's not, it should have asked anyway. Well, I mean, it always asks. I just don't know why it didn't. So you just go to edit mode. You hit A to select all the faces. And you go to face, triangulate, faces. These also will be like reinforcements. Back to object mode. Now let's re export the J beam again. Should have did that the first time. Now we need to export the deer. So I'll export a DAE into the same folder 
that the deer is currently in. Uh, that'll be fine. That's just the folder I extracted. But I don't want to confuse things. Let's do it this way. Let's go to the desktop and make a folder just for the deer mod. We'll just call it deer. Inside of here be the deer.dae. And the only flex body that there is is oh crap. Once again, export DAE. This time, say selection only, because we're not exporting the cube. That's exported separately as a JBeam. So we'll export, just overwrite the thing. Now, let's go to our mod folder. And in here, let's just take the dummy mod and recycle that. We're not recycling the JBeam, we're just going to reuse the JBeam text save a lot of time so I'll extract he was zipped I'll un extract him so that he is now like this now I'm gonna copy this actually let me rename this this will be called deer open deer go to mod info open this Oh, crap. Yeah, shit. I forgot. This is a... This is a... A repo mod. That's fine. I'll just delete that info. And in here, put another one. Let me just find one. Crap. Now another on my D drive. Or E drive backed up. And junk folder. Mods. It's take me forever to damn it'll be quicker just to go to one drive and download one of my own. We basically want to recycle the contents to make life quicker. Alright, yeah, but we use use my mod of me We just use this instead of the dummy, it'd be easier. So into the unpacked folder is where we will begin our I'll just delete that. Move here, rename deer mod info this gets changed to deer save this folder gets changed to deer and there's several things in here going on there's this is has this is uh my J beam for my dummy. See all of these are flex bodies. Basically all of them are different 
meshes in Blender, but they're all exported together as one DAE file. Because the JBeam knows to just look for those meshes in whatever DAEs are in that directory. So we'll change the name to Deer. The name of the mod will be Deer. Uh, now this has a slot for a hat. I'll leave that open for now. I mean, I'll leave it still there so we can slot something on the deer if we decide to. Now, all these flex bodies basically don't exist now because uh, we're re overriding everything. So we're going to use this from Blender. Deer It's the name of this flex body. It's the only flex body we got at the moment. And to make life easier, I'll just also call the group deer. So our first stop on the journey is the nodes. Now, you recall, we exported this box as a J-beam. It will show it has nodes. It should have eight of them. It has beams which was partly why we triangulated the box to have more beams for support. And then it's got the triangles that make up the outside. So as you recall, we exported that. That is what we will load over here and drag the deer info over to here. So where it exports, you can click on this scene properties and it'll tell you where the export path for the J-Beam is. I'll just copy that to my clipboard. It's typically where you save your Blender file is where that folder will reside. Dear Cube. So here's our deer cube. We'll just say move to other view. Now, do you remember when I said, before we exported this cube, I said I need to change the prefix for the nodes, or I said actually said vertices. See, that's where this comes in, body. So you can see that it put the prefix in front of all these nodes L1, R2, R3, R4 it just makes those numbers up and to avoid having duplicate items or no I'm sorry to avoid having multiple flex bodies sharing the same node coordinates if that happened to be the case you differentiate, differentiate them by giving them different group names it doesn't matter what you name it you can put letter A, letter B, you can put whatever you want. It's just so that they're all different in the case that we had two boxes we exported in the exact same space that would have the share the same coordinates. It would need to have two different prefixes so that the things can know the difference between the two. So we got nodes and we got beams and we got triangles that make up that box that I just explained nodes the beams and the triangles you may say well why can't I just use that J beam file for my mod well it's not complete it's not complete there's that's missing reference nodes which you don't have to have uh, it's missing mostly the flex bodies uh, there's no data for the nodes that tell it how much it weighs, what material it's made out of, whether or not it can collide with the earth, or whether or not it can collide with the car. And furthermore, the beams don't have anything to define them to what their physics are, which consists of the basic, basic is basically pre-compression, beam spring, damping, deform, and strength. We'll get into that later. So what we're going to do is remove all the nodes from the previous mod. 
you can know where that begins because it'll see like group A and since there's only going to be one group and I said we're going to also make life easier called the group deer that is where the nodes for the deer will go I, I should have called since there's going to be multiple body parts that's why I just use the word body because then they, when I get to the legs they'll be leg leg R, leg L and so on head neck <laughs> whatever so now we get rid of all the beams and there's a lot of beams from the old mods so it's easier to just left click scroll down to the bottom you'll know when the mod I mean you'll know when the beams in when you well there's a second set of beams we'll delete those We'll delete the second. I'll take that. I'll take this note out for now. And this one. And that one. Alright. So if you're using this file, that's all you'd have to do to get this prepared for the next thing. Oh, yeah, and get rid of the triangles. So that's how that will look. So take these beams from that deer cube and drag them right to there. Then take the triangles, drag and drop them into there. I believe that's pretty much it. We'll have a basic deer in a box. So now we'll save our file. Uh, let's see here. So here we are in the unpacked folder in deer, in vehicles, in deer. <laughs> um, I'm going to delete that. This is from the old mod. So is that, and that, and that. I'll leave that brain. We might use that. Clothes, we're not going to use. Or that. We might use that. I'll leave that in there for reference if anybody wants it. Uh, let's see. So the main dot materials that JSN that's in there, we're just going to rename the name of this material to Deer, because that is the name that I give the texture in Blender for the Deer. 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 What is the color map? Well, let me re-export this since I now have a proper folder on the desktop. Export Collider. In the mods folder, unpack deer vehicles, deer, deer.dae selection only, because that's all we want to send over there. Now, what was the texture called for that deer? Oh, it's a damn JPEG. What is the resolution? Okay, it's already power of two, so let's just convert it to a DDS. It's more performance friendly. DDS files do not have to be processed like JPEGs and PNGs that have to be first decompressed by or decoded by the or decompressed decoded whatever by the CPU before it goes to the GPU DDS's go straight to the GPU bypassing the CPU so if you have a track you've got a lot of PNGs and a lot of big PNG files a lot of big megabytes terabytes PNGs and they're not converted to, to DDS's uh, you're, you're probably killing your performance I would I would say I don't know exactly how much it impacts it. 
but it impacts it enough that they made a note about it. Image. All right. File export as. In that deer folder, we will just call this deer.dds. Now, since it does not have a transparency and it's not a normal map, it's just a color map, <coughs> we're just going to use compression type BC1 and generate bitmaps. And all DDSs have to have a compression for it to be compatible with Beam. Transparencies get BC3. Normal maps get BC5. And just every other color map, uh, BC1. Some things are grayscale, but we're not getting into that. <clears throat> it's basically back to the texture. Deer, deer, deer. Color map. Deer.dds. And I'll get rid of all the other textures. We don't need those. It's just confusing. So this is how just one texture looks as a main.materials.json. You do not have to put a location where that DDS is at. Since that DDS is in the folder with the mod and the main.materials, they're all together. So it knows, okay, it's all here. I ain't got to look nowhere else. That's the same thing applies for track DAEs, track assets, if you make things that go on a track. In fact, it'll tell you in the console that eventually file dependency locations will be depreciated. So let's try to load our deer and see what we get. Will we get a deer? Before we find that out, <laughs> let us take a screenshot of our deer here. I'll just hide all this stuff for now. Which one does it? Damn it. Which one hides? There we go. So what I'll do is I'll just take a screenshot, print screen. I'll go into the photo editor, make a new file, or control paste, I mean, Control V. I'll crop this to two to one. Yeah, I know it's crooked. Flatten the layer. Change the resolution to 800 by 400. I think I'll throw a sharpen on it too. Unsharp mask. Make it a little sharper. I don't see that. Oh, preview's off. Yeah, you gotta turn that preview on and see it. Damn, that just looks crappy no matter what, huh? All right, so what this gets exported as in that same folder is called default.jpg. That'll be the preview. So instead of seeing a dummy of me, you'll see the deer at default.jpg. What the hell? Get off my screen. I can't damn save the damn file with you in the way. Replace. That don't matter. So we'll go to small grid because it loads the fastest. And we should be able to import our deer as he is now in a, as a box. A box cube, ice cube deer. Cube deer. I know there's a cube steak. So I guess there's a cube deer too. Well, lordy, 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 she ain't there. Damn son of a gun is red. But at least he's here. That's what matters. He's here and he's in good spirits. He's ready to destroy a car when car versus deer debuts. Whenever that'll be. So you can see by hitting Control B, the box that we constructed for our deer. I don't know what the hell that is on the ground. 
What is that? Where'd that come from? I don't even know what that is. That might be part of the other mod. And I said, remember I said it was slotted? I think that's a hat. And I think that went with the other mod. So where is this texture? What happened? No material. Unable to find material mapping to deer and unknown. Oh, you know what? When I was in Blender, what I did not do is, remember we converted that texture to a DDS that I said runs more efficient? Well, we didn't tell Blender to use it. So the DAE file is still looking for <clears throat> whatever that <coughs> deer set default map base color. Still looking for that. So now if we re-export our deer with selection only, should fix it. But I don't know, it didn't. This is one of these times where you just say, close the game. Go into your user folder. Go to temp vehicles and delete that. Because that is a DAE, a CDAE. That's a cached version of the DAE. And it can have the wrong information. Mostly pertaining to it's still looking for the wrong texture. So we reload. And it's good you see these errors, not just because I make plenty of them, but you may run into the same error and say, well, it was so, it looked so easy when he did it. No, I still get them, get my share of problems. Happens more than you think. Look at that shit there. What'd I tell you? What did I tell you? See, this is this this is some 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 some, some real crap. I think now you remember what I said about the file dependencies. I think that's that exception does not apply with mods. Or that is not a that may not be power of two, even though it said it was when we exported it. It may not actually be. So let's double check the resolution, because if that's not power of two, it ain't gonna load. But I don't think it would show you the red material. Something's off. I just can't quite put my finger on it at the moment. I got to think, think, think. Mods, unpack, deer, vehicles, deer. All right, what did you got in here? Deer.dds. All right. Let's do it this way. Let's go on to this. Uh, Let's re extract him. So it's vehicle slash. Okay. That's probably why I've been having issues with my mods lately. I get confused sometimes. All right, let's make that correction. That's not the damn right one. Here we go. Now, if you ever change the texture and you're working out of the unpacked folder, it'll add mods slash to unpack. You need to remove that so that this is all that remains. Let's check, make sure that is power of two by right clicking properties, details, wait a minute, but it's not, that, you dumbass, you're looking at the wrong damn folder, you in the dummy folder, you dummy, which 
2048? 2048. Oh, ah. 32-bit. That ain't gonna work. It needs to be 8-bit. It's a little weird. Load him into here and change him. Oh, I think Beam, I think Beam supports 16-bit color only if it's grayscale. And this is color. So, up here, where is that? Damn it, I always forget. Image, mode, RGB, no, precision is precision. Oh, it is say that, damn it, it does say 8-bit. I don't know, then. I don't know. I must be confused in my bits a bit. All right, let's reload. Did I save that change? Save, yeah. If it don't let you save, then it saved it. Look at that, we got us a deer. So a couple things to note. The weight, the weight. Each one of these nodes, you can see them here. Each one of these nodes have a weight. You can assign different weights for every single one of them if you want to. But we'll go back to the J-beam so we can examine that area so you can understand it a little better. I see, look, the J-beam still got my name. It doesn't matter. You can have multiple J-beams. In fact, like if you look at like one of the cars, you know, it's like 50 J-beams for a car. Something like that. Yeah, and I'll leave that hat. I may add, may add something else to the scene, and I'll use that and show you how to slot it. But for now... Focus on nodes. This is the nodes for that box, and this is the node weight. Now, deer are pretty heavy. You hit a deer, it's probably gonna you're gonna feel it. Uh, it's not fixed in place. If it's fixed, then it doesn't move. The next factor to consider is the beams. Now, since this is just a box. It's a pretty strong box. It takes, what, one million, I'm assuming, Newtons, Newton forces, before it will give way, bend. If it reaches 900,000 Newtons, it'll permanently de de deform. If the beam spring is 50,000, then I guess it's 50,000 Newtons? I don't know. Uh, before the beams will break, and you'll start getting broken beams, or you'll get triangles that disappear from the mesh. You can disable triangle breaking, though, but damping is kind of like a modifier. You know, it's like, I don't know what the math equation is, but basically the amount of damping before the spring kicks in or whatnot. I'm not, I don't know about shocks and shit like that, so I couldn't tell you. Uh, but anyway, now we're done with this. Let's make it better. So to make it better, 
we'll make a second body part. We'll start with the head. Now what we have to do now is surgically cut the head off with the precision. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It ain't got to be perfect. How you do this is up to you. Everyone does this maybe a little different way than one another. I will try to select that node. Go over here, hold control. So that I can make my way around like a collar. Now I'll turn on X-ray. This way I can see through the object and select through it, not just one side of it. I'll hold my left mouse button to get my lasso and hold shift to include all those as well. Then I will say mesh separate by selection. Back to object mode, we pick the head. Back to this green triangle, we will give this beam prefix, or node prefix, vertice prefix, whatever you want to call it, the prefix head. Remember the other one said body. Now we have to have it's got to have its own box. Like the body had a box, the head's got to have a box. And not just that, now the body's got to be modified so that it doesn't include the head because it's going to have its own box. So what I'll do, I'll just make a box. We're making it simple now. We're not trying to get... Yes, it's better if you can make a very close to the model J-beam look-alike you know, it's possible, uh, but for now we're just keeping it simple with simple boxes. We'll add a mesh cube, we'll call that cube, uh, I don't know, deer. No, we'll call this one head cube. <laughs> head cube, that'll be the name of the J-beam. Uh, I remembered this time to face triangulate faces scale the box down to the size that will just contain the head now you can hide the body because this is where you want to make this box more or less the best container for that head that's possible. Now, of course, more vertices and more subdivisions, you could get it a lot better in a box, but like I said, we're keeping it simple. I'm not even going to worry about the nose sticking out. So, the bottom is uh, flat across but remember we cut this mesh so if we look at just one of the cut sections we'll see that it's a hole in there now do you want the deer to have a hole in its neck or do you want it to be solid and then the head has to you have to tell it whether you want it to be open or solid which I'm just gonna leave it like this I'll just leave it keep things simple but in case you want to know, you would just select Mesh, go to edit mode. Uh, we'll pick all these edges with x-ray mode turned on and hit F. Now you can fix that UV mapping by going into the UV editor and hitting face and picking that face and uh, Let's just unwrap that and scale it. I'll just tell it to be, I don't know, 
that color by scaling it so small that that's all it's going to show. Or, better yet, I'm going to move it to here. I mean, I could have just painted a little red splatter or something and moved it to there. It probably look a little cooler, but... Ah. So that's how you would do that. And then you do the same thing with the head if you wanted to... Which I need to rename this real quick. Just name it Head. Pick the head, go to Edit Mode, do the same thing. Where we... Grab those edges, hit F, and UV Editor, do the same thing with this one. You get Z on the keyboard and say Material Preview, if, you know, I don't know why it swaps it out back to uh, the other shading view when you're doing this it would seem like you'd want to see what you're doing with the texture but I don't know don't know why they did it like that so object mode the head gets exported by itself but would we forget well the origin still set because we didn't move it. It's still where it was. It shouldn't have to do anything to it. So I'm not going to. But in case I did, it doesn't hurt to set origin again to 3D cursor, even though it's not actually doing anything. It doesn't hurt to do it, and you know it's done. So if there is a problem, you know it wasn't related to that. You know, just think ahead a little. Now we export the head and the body together we multiple select holding shift we will say export DAE into that deer folder overwrite that deer with selection only because we're only sending the deer body in the head which I probably should have named that body instead of deer but oh well the work Now that got a J-beam head cube. Now we got to modify the body, the cube for the body. And you guessed it. It just needs to cover it up somewhat. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to get all precise. Try to make the video shorter than it. I don't want it to be a super long video. This is just basic stuff. So, we have to update this. So, we have to re export it. We also have the head cube to export. Now, we made that cube. We didn't set its origin, so it's got to be set to the 3D cursor. Apply all transforms. Select the cube in the box. I was just making sure that I triangulated it. Yeah, I see it's triangulated. Both of them are triangulated. I knew that was. I wasn't sure if I did that one. This is a good time to save your file. This is the blender file that we just called Deer Blend. Nothing related to the game. This is just the blender file. It has nothing to do with the mod itself. Now we export the J-beams, which should now say successfully exported to J-beams. We go to the folder that those J beams were just exported to and that's not it. It's just easier to just click on this and this and 
copy that to the clipboard that way you go right to it So, Deer Cube J Beam, Head Cube J Beam. Head Cube will go over here. We'll delete. Well, actually, if we select this, since we just re exported that with new information, it'll say your file's been modified. Do you want to reload it? Yes. So, here we got the head. I thought I named them damn prefixes. Did I not damn name them damn prefixes? Apparently not. So, select the box. And once again. Now, we don't have to export them both this time. Yes, I want to reload it. Now, you see there's that prefix. So we got two things now. We got a deer and we got a head. Those are the flex bodies. Not to be confused with the box that is containing them. Just you got two body parts and two flex, I mean they're basically the two flex bodies. So in here, back up here at the top, flex bodies, we'll just copy this, paste. Head and we'll give the group name a head. Now, since we modified that deer cube, the only thing that changed was the location of the nodes. We didn't take any away, we didn't add any, we just moved them. We scaled the box, so the only thing that actually changed was the location for the nodes, so we don't have to replace all the stuff just the nodes. So we'll delete them and we'll copy over the modified ones. Now we go to our second group. So we just copy that group. We're saving time. Uh, we paste here and this is the other group which is also called head. Same as the flex body. Now we go to the head cube which is the second J-beam we exported. We copy those nodes into there, to there. And we do that with the beams. Now the beams doesn't have to be separated with something that says, you know, this is the head, this is the body. You don't have to worry about that. I'll just copy them and drag them right there. And do the same thing with the triangles. Now they're not attached to, it, to one another yet. They're just both their own individual uh, parts. So we'll save the J-beam, we'll reload the level. It may crash since I did this while the damn level's loaded. Oops. I saw someone asked in the forum, can you put back the old menu that completely ex exits back to the main menu? That would suck. This makes it faster to reload. I hate going back to the main menu the old way where you had to wait to shit to load. This is much better in my opinion. Uh-oh. What we got is a white truck. Whatever your default vehicle is, if you screwed up the J-beam in any way, you will get a white truck or whatever your default vehicle is. So now we got to look and say, what did we screw up? And it's good you see this because you'll likely mess up too. And see, I saw many white trucks in my mod making journey. 
So that's that, that's that. Dear head. Something's. Now this is where you can look at over here how this stuff is like what's after each thing and you can compare to yours make sure you didn't accidentally hit the wrong little thing accidentally I mean, that's what I do that is it or not I don't think it is but that's what it looks like here uh, let's see this don't have thrusters Oh, you know what I bet what it is? It's just the fact that we did it while the damn game was running. And it screwed up the temp file. That's my guess. But I don't really know. So we'll close this. We'll delete the temp folder. Temp. vehicles now this is just the texture no I'm sorry no this is the DAE the CDAE there's another location where if you modify the textures after the fact it will put that main dot materials in a different place which that will go into here in vehicles it'd be a folder for deer if you did any changes and you have to remember if you did because you need to make sure that one overwrites the one if you're working like me out of the unpacked folder because it will be two different main dot materials and you'll drive yourself crazy trying to figure out why my damn changes working deer and head that is correct hmm let's just try to reload after we deleted that Maybe it'll work. Well, <clears throat> we'll see. Yeah, if you're doing extensive work, making a mod, and you're adding and adding and adding and doing stuff, you want to probably delete that temp folder every time. Look at there, that fixed the problem like I thought. So there's the head and there's the body. And like I said, it wasn't attached. I don't even know how it's kind of hanging on there, but it is. So he's like, well, that's great, but now I want to connect it. All right, it's fine, it's easy enough. Now for this change, you don't have to delete any temp folders. This is one of these things that I believe you can change and don't quote me on that. Let me just, let's see. In this program, the BNE editor, we will load the Deer JB. If you ever import a J-beam in here and it's red, then it's inside out. An easy way to check if your mesh is inside out or not is in Blender. 
like those two cubes, for example, the head cube, and that, you can go up to here and say face orientation. If it's blue, you're good. If it's red, you're inside out. If it was inside out, you could just simply pick the box, go to edit, hit A to select all, uh, mesh, normals, flip. But we don't have to do that because ours aren't flipped. But it's happened quite a bit. So we want to connect these two parts. So it's probably easier to explain in here what I'm about to do so it makes more sense. We're going to take these two things. We're going to, inside of the beam editor, we're going to select that node and that node. And we're going to say connect that one to that one. I didn't realize that damn thing was inside the other one like that. No wonder it got stuck. Oh well. I could move it up some, but then I'd have to re-export the box. Uh, if We'll only do that if we have to. But we're going to connect that node to that node. Uh, this one, maybe to that one, or maybe to that one. And this one to this one, maybe that one to that one also. That's how we're going to basically be doing So inside of here, we have to go to beams, add single. Now remember, where your cursor is, is where it will place the new beam. If you don't remember this, it's going to put them up there at the top above that bracket and the mod won't work. You have to make sure that when you add new stuff, you know, it's there. Now what you see over here is the exact same thing that you see when you load it in Notepad++. Same thing. It's just, it's just a little harder to see because the letters are a little smaller. So we'll put our cursor here to indicate this is where the new beams will go. We'll say connect that one to that one. See? Head to body. That one to that one. Uh, if you ever get that crap happen, you can't see the damn thing, you can go back to here and say, do not show triangles. That one to that one. Some people may prefer to work like this. And then I'll give this a little support. I'll say, you know what, you go up to there and support it like that like a broomstick just sticking out the ground holding up the head except it's connected to that part of the bottom of the box and just kind of balance it out maybe that one to that one uh, I guess we could do this too why not give it a little more support maybe that's too much support I don't know but that should hold pretty steady now we did not put any cross beams which connect like a corner to an opposite corner and like that. So anytime you, if you change your mind you can delete the last entry and just hit refresh and it will update it. If you ever hit refresh and it disappears entirely then you screwed up something. Like you may have said oh, I forgot to put my cursor over here and um, I, I made a beam and you know what it stuck it somewhere it shouldn't have put it if you hit refresh and it disappears yeah you screwed up it could be good to refresh often so you don't do too much and get so far ahead of yourself that you're like oh crap it could be anything so this is connected now now the thing is the beam spring, the beam deformed, the beam bling, 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 all that shit. These little connectors I just made, we're going to give them their own unique property. So remember these were extras, we didn't use them. I'm just going to copy this to the clipboard and paste it here. And basically whatever falls under one of these deals, what's under follows what's above it. Uh, if there's nothing else 
after the one that's up here, then it then whatever is under here, whether it be two, three, four, or twenty-seven different body parts, they all follow these values. But we want these different because these we're gonna make fragile. We want a thing to break easily. So that probably needs more, probably a hundred. I mean it sounds like a lot of hundred thousand, but it really ain't. Uh, beam deform. I don't really want them to deform at all, but I would like them to break. So, uh, if the strength is less than the deform, it'll be more uh, brittle. That's one way to think of it. And a lot of times, this is just for me, it's trying different weights and things. Oh, while I mention weights, remember we got body parts, the body, which these nodes weigh five, whatever, whatever that weight is. And the head's also weighs that. So they should be lighter than the body. Since what defines both of these are both perfect boxes, and we can make the weight for the head vertices lighter. We'll just say three. Now, if you ever have something too light, like point one, point two, I mean zero point one, I mean, or zero point two, and the beam spring is too great, then it'll explode. <laughs> you don't want that. But you won't really know until it happens. And basically, basically the game will become unstable and it'll pause. But if you put it in super slow motion, 100 times slow, you can see that thing just kaboom. We will reload the level. Like I said, this isn't something that actually has to, I don't think the game has to be reloaded entirely for this to take effect. They're just adding beams. But as you can see, that noggin is on that body and it ain't moving because of our new supports we added. Now remember I said these can break. You can hit control B, control B, control B, control. One of these, if you, uh, it's not showing me what I'm trying to see. I don't know why it's not showing me. Total weight, 150, I'm hitting shift, uh, I'm sorry, control N, total weight, 154 kilograms. See, you can see here the head weighs 3 kilograms for each of those vertices. And the body weighs 5. See how that's different? So now we can, I can illustrate how you can break the head off with enough force. Now, why is it floating in the air like the exorcist? Well, that's the beams that are connected to the bottom. Now, if you would like this thing so that if just one of these, just one of these were to snap, the whole head would come off. Then what you'd have to do is add a break group. What a break group will do is it will break every beam in the group if only one breaks. I wish I could remember exactly the uh, 
uh, argument, the line, whatever you call it, but I don't, so I have to Google it real quick. Uh, J Beam Break Group and in the Beam Wiki we get an example of a break group somewhere in here. Or maybe not in that. Beams. Break group. Uh, well, I'd like to have seen a damn example. And show examples for everything else. Oh, there it is. See that? Break group. So I'll copy this. You see it's in beam section. And it's above the things that define the beam's physics. So we'll copy this to our clipboard. Now, I don't think it matters really a crap difference what you name the break group. All it knows is whatever it's breaking is whatever comes after it. So in this case, the brake group would be these connectors. So if one breaks, they all break. So what we have to do is hit Control V to paste that. Uh, I mean, I don't know. We just could just call it neck, <laughs> neck bone. I don't know. I don't know what that would be. Uh, how strong is that? Well, we'll just leave that with these values, the same thing. But what will happen now, one will break, they'll all break, or that should be what happens. Now, there's also another setting for the type of break group. I believe zero is the one that... This has got type. There it is, break group type, zero. That is where, if it's set to zero, they all break if one breaks, I believe. I uh, don't know where that's at, but I'm pretty sure that was great group type. If this sets the break group behavior, if set to zero, this beam will break others in the break group. If set to one, this beam will not break others in the break group, which would be like, well, why the hell would you have a break group if it's not going to break anything else? I don't know. I don't know. Hold on. We'll save it. We'll reload the level. We'll reload our deer. And we will see if the break group works like it should. If it should, we'll see why not. So here's the head. We'll show the beams so that when one of these breaks, now I hit Control B enough times that I can see the damage. If a if a beam becomes red, that means it breaks. But that is not the right thing. It's not showing me for some damn reason. Damn it! There it is. There it is. And I don't know why it's not showing me up here, but it's not. I had to hit Control B, Control B, Control B to cycle through. So as something gets ready to break and it's getting under stress, you can see it'll start to get some tension on it. It'll change colors a bit. Or, I mean, there wasn't much to 
change because we made it pretty brittle. But the point is, they all broke. Like I said, you break one, they all break. Now you're gonna still see them connected, but they're broke. Well, you know what? I want that head to bounce. Oh, fine. You can do that. Go up to... Uh, friction coefficient. And like with the weight, these can have their own values, so we'll tell the friction coefficient. See, I don't know if anything can go higher than one. But we're gonna try. Put five. But I'm gonna change the coefficient of the body to zero point three. If you ever do a point, then be sure to put a zero in front of the point. <clears throat> now when we reload, this will be the last thing for tonight. Now we'll reload. And we will see two different types of behavior for bounciness or sliding. The more the number, the more it will bounce. The less below one in the point, like 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, the lower the number, the more it'll slide like a piece of melted ice on a slick surface. We can kind of mess around. Now you see how the camera is like, you know, kind of jittering around. Well, we don't have any reference nodes, so it don't know where the hell it's supposed to be looking when it spawns. We'll get into that another day. But as you can see, he should slide very easily because we told the body to have very little coefficient, while the head should bounce quite a bit. We're like, well, why isn't it like properly touching the ground? Well, that's because the J beam, like we just made, I told you we we're just keeping it simple. We just made a simple box. We'll get into refining and all that later. Let's just get the basics out of the way. Because if you ain't got the basics, there ain't no point. What I'm gonna do is share this as it is now. So if anybody wants to follow along as I do the other parts in the next video they'll have everything that I have here exactly how it is here so when I start the next one just pick up where we left off and as always as in all as always you can use my mods for whatever you want I don't even ask for credit or anything like that that's anything on my page, whether it's a level, a track asset, a texture, mod, use it whatever you want. So yeah, we'll get into reference nodes later and the camera distance and all that. For now, let me just pack the mod and share it on one drive. Now you'll have to unpack the mod to do work on it. So, you can see here, mods, unpacked, deer, vehicles, deer. That's how it's laid out. We'll let the game pack it. Mod manager, deer, pack. Now you can use the mod in a zip form if you just want to use the mod, you know, that's fine. But when you pack a mod, it's going to put it in the mod folder. That's where it would stay if it's zipped. Um, like now it's not unpacked, 
so we can't work on it. Now I'll just upload it to OneDrive. Yeah, I've been pretty busy making stuff for this game. About a year, a little, about a year and two months now, I think. Let's see, was it February? It was February of last year, which was 2021. And we're in July, February, March, April, May, June. Oh, damn, maybe a year and five months? Longer than I thought. I've been dragging my feet lately. Ain't really been learning much new stuff. Oh, no, 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 that ain't what I'm trying to do. Damn talking and grab the wrong damn one. Dummy. Yeah, you are a dummy. You're supposed to be putting a deer in there. So, uh, let's see, deer, where are you at? There you are. Uh, we don't want anybody being mean and deleting stuff, so we'll take that off. Copy this link, and this will be the links in the video. And if you enjoyed this video, uh, you have the option to like and subscribe. YouTube will be proud of you. <laughs> I don't know. I just, you know, I don't really ever mention that much because everybody else does, and I was like, what the hell, man? People get it by now, I would think. You like it or you don't. It just helps the algorithm, they say. So, like, basically, like, what the hell am I doing now? I'm such a dumbass. I'm damn loading Facebook up. That ain't YouTube. Ah, uh, dumbass. Dumb dummy. So, here is today's video. Oh, I gotta stop the video to upload it. All right. Hope you enjoyed. Hope this helped you understand a little bit. See you in the next one.